So the Impact Wrestling, AEW and New Japan working relationship continues and more talent are crossing between borders. The Forbidden Door has been well and truly open because Finn Juice is coming to Impact Wrestling. Yes, Juice Robinson and David Finlay will be appearing on Impact Wrestling on Access TV tonight. They not only will be appearing on the show, it's not a bit like a Kenny Omega backstage segment vignette promo kind of a situation. Juice Robinson and David Finlay will be in the Impact Zone tonight on Impact Wrestling on Access. TV. So what does all of this mean? Um, what, what's going to happen? There's lots of exciting things here, isn't there? So New Japan Pro Wrestling's Juice Robinson and David Finley will appear on Impact Wrestling tonight on Access TV and Twitch, of course, and around the world on various social media platforms. Now, a video aired at the end of uh, Saturday's Impact Wrestling No Surrender showing highlights of Finley and Robinson as the New Japan Pro Wrestling logo was shown. Impact Social Media then later confirmed that the two were headed to Impact and would appear on tonight's episode of Impact Wrestling on Access TV. Now, the tag team are a former IWGP Tag Team Championship winner. They most recently competed in the 2020 World Tag League Tournament, losing to Tamatonga and Tangaloa in the finals. Robinson was originally scheduled to face Kenta for the IWGP United States Championship title shot briefcase at Wrestle Kingdom 15. However, of course, he was sidelined with a fractured orbital bone in December, putting him out of action. Um, Impact, of course, they've had several talents from various other companies appear recently. They've had the likes of Matt Hardy and Private Party uh, from uh, AEW appear. They've also had uh, people like Tony Khan, the AEW president himself, himself appear inside the Impact Zone alongside Jerry Lynn. Uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling's Kenta also made an appearance on AEW Dynamite for the last two weeks. He attacked John Moxley and also competed in a match tagging with Kenny Omega last week to face John Moxley and Lance Archer. Of course, John Moxley will defend the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship against Kenta on the February 26th edition of New Japan Strong. So this, this is really, really interesting. Interesting because before the, any of this AEW and New Japan stuff, Impact Wrestling, of course, they had a working relationship with New Japan. Uh, that was evident in several uh, Impact Wrestling stars competing for New Japan in their various tournaments. Chris Bay was an example of this, competed for uh, New Japan last year in, in a tournament. So they've had this working relationship for a while. Uh, when the Good Brothers signed their contracts with Impact Wrestling last year, around July, they had the same special clause that all of the AEW talents have put into their contract, whereby should they uh, a gap appear and should they be able to they can work new japan pro wrestling events around their impact wrestling dates impact wrestling is the priority but uh, when it's much easier to travel back and forth to japan there's no quarantine period etc they can work those new japan dates uh, whenever they feel free and of course that was a big deal uh, for the good brothers everyone knows their history when it comes to new japan former iwgp tag team champions you know members of the Bullet Club, do we need to go on and on? Everyone knows the history there. That's why they're uh, aligned with Kenny Omega in AEW and Don Callis is part of that whole relationship as well. So this one was really interesting, really interesting. I think if you look at what are Juice Robinson and David Finley going to do, it would seem relatively, I would think, obvious that they're going to somehow have some form of a confrontation with the Good Brothers. I mean, that makes totally the most sense, right? Uh, I just mentioned there that the Good Brothers have those clauses in their contracts that they can do New Japan Pro Wrestling dates if they're able to. Now, originally, originally, I think that was meant to be that if they wanted to go over to Japan, if they had the time um, and it didn't conflict with the Impact Wrestling dates, they could go over to Japan, they could work a Wrestle Kingdom, a Dominion, you name it, you know, New Year's, beginning, whatever it's called. They could work those shows uh, if and when they pleased. Obviously, I think things have changed a little bit when it comes to that. And a great example of that is John Moxley when it comes to AEW. Because previously, of course, the AEW contracts were the same for big talents, uh, for the likes of John Moxley, Chris Jericho, I think even Kenny Omega and the Bucks and Cody, they all have those clauses in their contracts. Uh, the contract was that, you know, you're exclusive to AEW in the United States, maybe from some select indie dates if you want to work them. Uh, but you can go to Japan and work for Japan as long as it takes place in Japan and not in the United States. Well, 
that was fine in a normal world but of course we're not living in a normal world at the moment and travel between uh, Japan and the United States is is difficult not impossible it's just difficult there's a quarantine period I think the period's two weeks or something like that so all together if you're going to Japan quarantining for two weeks competing and then coming back to the United States quarantining for two weeks you're looking at a month of really quarantine and not really doing anything so it's not impossible but it, it, it's very difficult so we've seen now with John Moxley appearing on the New Japan Strong show, which is based, of course, in the United States, and Kenta appearing on AEW Dynamite, that those concessions have been made about those exclusivity kind of situations in the contracts. Previously, it had to take place in another country. Now, because of the pandemic, because of the difficulties, I think... AEW, New Japan and Impact are being way more lenient when it comes to appearing for, for other companies. And there is obviously this this working relationship. We knew about the working relationship between uh, Impact and AEW. We kind of knew about it when it came to Impact and New Japan. There have been some New Japan stars in the past that had worked for Impact over the last few years. Um, but this is a real stamp of approval that there is definitely an ongoing working relationship. I mean, not only uh, do you have Juice Robinson and David Finley using the ring names, but I mean, there's a, there's a New Japan logo in that picture. They're being very transparent here and they're being very obvious that not only is it Juice Robinson and David Finley appearing on Impact Wrestling this week, it's New Japan's Juice Robinson and David Finley appearing this week. So as I mentioned, what do they do on Impact Wrestling? Well, I think it's it's very obvious that they would go for the Good Brothers. I don't see I don't see who else they would face off with. I don't. I know there's there there are tag teams in Impact Wrestling. There are tag teams they could go after, but for me, the obvious storyline direction here is that they come in, they challenge the Good Brothers. Um, New Japan are building to this big New Japan Strong show, aren't they, on February 26th. That's going to have Kenta uh, versus John Moxley for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship. One would assume they could also load onto that show possibly an Impact World Tag Team Championship match of having the Good Brothers face off against Juice Robinson and David Finley for the Impact World Tag Team Championships on the New Japan Strong show. The same New Japan Strong show that's got Kenta versus John Moxley. That's going to be a big show. To me, I mean, I, and again, I don't know this. This is this is just pure speculation on my part. This is pure guesswork of trying to see where the pieces are going to be put in place here. But I would think, I would think that is the most likely direction. I mean, I could be wrong. We could be looking at a scenario where we have the Good Brothers facing Juice Robinson and David Finley, say, uh, Impact Rebellion in April or something like that instead. That's also, obviously, a possibility. Um Again, you know, it's midway through February right now. Can they stretch it out that long? I mean, it's possible, uh, but I think all, all roads at the moment are pointing towards that New Japan Strong Show uh, on February 26th. So that's what I think is going to happen. We could be wrong. We could be wrong. I think the exciting thing as well is that, of course, um, we know how Impact Wrestling tape their television, uh, do their TV tapings. We know how they tape their content. So uh, given the fact that Juice Robinson and David Finley uh, are on Impact Wrestling tonight, this is a good indication that they're going to be on our TV screens, screens for the next three or four weeks or something like that, which, again, certainly will help with the show. Now, will Juice Robinson and David Finley have the same effect that Kenny Omega had uh, when he made his uh, Impact Wrestling debut and spiking the ratings? I think there probably will be a little bit of a rating spike, not as much as a Kenny Omega. Uh, obviously, New Japan are very popular around the world. Their footprint in the United States isn't as big as an AEW or anything like that. Um, I think the excitement for Juice Robinson and David Finley will mainly come from you know the hardcore pro wrestling fans on social media. But at the end of the day, that's who watches Impact Wrestling on Access TV anyway. And the same on Twitch. You know, It's a difficult cable station to find. It's a diff diff difficult cable network to find, rather. And you have to go out of your way to watch it on Access TV. And the same goes for Twitch. So I would think that it probably might help the ratings a little bit. I don't expect to see Kenny Omega numbers. Um, but it's, it's a big deal. I think... And this is no disrespect to Juice Robinson or David Finley by any stretch of the imagination, but I think the the event itself, the fact that we're having a New Japan tag team, a, a an established New Japan tag team, uh, the New Japan logo, uh, an emphasis on New Japan appearing on Impact Wrestling, I think that's bigger than the tag team themselves appearing, if that makes sense. And again, that's no disrespect to Juice Robinson or David Finley. I'm very excited to see them. I, I'm a big fan of their work. And uh, I think they'll do great things in Impact Wrestling. But I think the overall 
situation of what this is kind of um, insinuating between Impact Wrestling, New Japan and AEW for that matter, that really is a big deal. That is a big deal because it goes to show once again, like Tony Khan has been saying, that this, this forbidden door that he's been calling it is well and truly open. Um, Impact Wrestling, AEW and New Japan are well and truly in agreement. They're well and truly in a working relationship. The borders have been smashed open and anyone can appear anywhere. And it's like I've been saying several times here on the channel. Now, initially, I thought it was just Impact and AEW, but now you involve Impact Wrestling, uh, <laughs> easy to New Japan. Um, the dream matches here are incredible. I mean, they really are. Um, Juice Robinson and David Finley, if you haven't seen them, their work as a tag team, Finn Juice, um, that they are they they really are they're a really exciting tag team they are an exciting tag team juice robinson i think his development um from his time in nxt what was his name cj parker was that his name in nxt at the time um is just been exponential i mean really exponential he legitimately and i don't mean to overhype him or anything like that but uh, juice robinson's developed into one of the best promos in the business i mean his promo ability is just that good if you've ever seen his post-match press conferences that they like to do in new japan he's incredibly strong on the mic so i would think i would think they're going to give both of them significant um TV time and mic time. Obviously, David Finley, the son of Fit Finley as well, second generation, was it third generation as well? I'm not not too sure, but I'm really excited for what they can offer to Impact Wrestling. I am really excited. And again, we don't know the finer details. We'll find out tonight about what this entails. Again, I think it's, I mean, it has to entail, I think, the Good Brothers, considering they retained the Impact Tag Team Championships uh, this past Saturday at No Surrender. You would think, okay, where did they go now? Um, a private party and Matt Hardy going to appear on Impact Wrestling again? I, you know what? I just don't think so. I, I don't think so. I mean, possibly this goes back to when No Surrender was actually taped, because if it was taped as part of the TV tapings over the course of the last week or so, then it's a possibility that Private Party and Matt Hardy are still there because they did the initial No Surrender taping. So that is a possibility, of course. Um, I, I would just look at it now and say, OK, well, what is there for Matt Hardy and Private Party now in Impact Wrestling? And, I, and the answer is I don't know. I don't know. I mentioned before that I wouldn't be against, and I still do hope it happens, uh, Matt Hardy having another match, even if it was just one match in Impact Wrestling to really you know, tie off his Impact Wrestling career because he really has contributed so much to the company over the years. I mean, he isn't lying when he says that he really helped <laughs> stop the company from going bankrupt in 2016. The, the Broken Hardys, the Broken Universe, Brother Nero, King Maxwell, um, all that kind of stuff, it really helped save. It was the only valuable commodity really about Impact Wrestling during that period. And they had a stacked roster at the time. They've got current WWE Champion Drew McIntyre was on the roster at the time, but Matt Hardy and the Broken Universe was really the thing that saved Impact Wrestling back then. So... Um, I, I would I would hope that we see one more Matt Hardy match in Impact Wrestling. Will we see it or not? I don't know. I don't know. Who would he face off against? Logic would suggest he probably faces off against a, a Rich Swan or something like that. I mean, this is Big Money Matt at the end of the day. So what does Big Money Matt go after? He goes after Big Money and that would be the Impact World Championship, wouldn't it? So um, is that a possibility? I don't know. I really don't know. I guess we'll find out more uh, tonight in Impact Wrestling. But very exciting. Very exciting to see Juice Robinson and David Finley tonight. And again, I... I I think it's exciting, obviously, to have them there, but I think the real exciting part of this, the real exciting part of this is that it's a New Japan tag team. It's a very vocal and obvious um, indication of New Japan's relationship with Impact Wrestling that anyone can appear anywhere at any period of time. So now it's Juice Robinson and David Finley, but we've heard the rumours about Okada coming to either AEW or Impact Wrestling. I did a video on it yesterday. Be sure to check that out. Link will be in the description box below. Personally, if he goes to one place, I think it will be going to AEW, but if he can appear in both, that's great. And look, if you're going to have the big stars go to uh, go to AEW, there's no reason why you still can't have some very popular stars appear in Impact Wrestling. What about uh, Rocky Romero? What about Tatama Tonga? You know, get NATO on Impact. I mean, I don't know. I mean, he has he has history as well of Impact Wrestling. Quite a few New Japan stars do because there has been relationships in the past. But uh, there was a period of time where that relationship wasn't very strong, pun intended, uh, because of the Vince Russo effects of Impact Wrestling on New Japan. But it's great to see that this relationship is thriving once again as a fan. I'm very, very excited because you really can't predict who's going to show up where. 
Uh, and that really makes pro wrestling exciting to watch again. So I'm very, very excited about it. And I, I like everyone else, will be watching Impact Wrestling tonight. Watching Finn Juice appear on Impact Wrestling. But of course, as always... This is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Juice Robinson and David Finley heading to Impact Wrestling this week? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys talking about Impact Wrestling, AEW, WWE, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or how you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.